everyone. My name is Bianca Melendez, and I am an officer of the Student National Education Association, also known as SNEA around campus. Um, and I will be serving as the facilitator for tonight's session. And I will and um, we'll be having um, someone modern, modern, monitoring the chat box. Um, and I also have my co-facilitator, uh, Miss Angelica Devon. So before we begin, I would like to go over some housekeeping rules. Please keep your microphones on mute unless instructed otherwise by our presenter. Um, please type your questions in the uh, chat box. Uh, we will be answering them as we, uh, as soon as we get can get to them. Um, and thank you. Today's um, presentation is going to be led by Miss Courtney Wagner. So everyone, enjoy. Oh, there we go. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Courtney Wagner. Maybe. <laughs> so my name is Courtney Wagner. I, I can say yes to that today. I'm one of the program specialists on the Instructional Technology and Library Media team. I am a graduate of Orange County Public Schools. My father worked for Orange County Public Schools. He actually just retired this year. I started my journey as a middle school English teacher, and then I followed my eighth grade class to high school, and I had quite a few of them for four years. I taught journalism and English at, at Okoye High School. I have a bachelor's of science in event management. So I'm actually a, a, a change of, of degree. And then I earned my ed leadership at Stetson University. Hey everyone, uh, my name's Nicole Lopez. I'm another program specialist on the instructional technology and library media team. I actually attended Orange County Public Schools back in the day, all throughout my schooling from K through 12th grade. And um, I went to Florida State University, got my uh, bachelor's in science in English education. Then I moved back to Orlando to teach. I started at middle school in ELA for eighth grade, and then I moved to seventh grade I've done ESOL compliance and MTSS. I've also been a dean at a high school. And um, I went in and got my ed leadership from St. Leo University online. And now I'm at the district level. So fun times. <laughs> so we're going to be looking today at what one-to-one -one teaching really is. So in OCPS, we have a lot of schools that are one-to-one. -one. We actually have 202 schools where students and teachers have devices. Our K-1 students have iPads and then two through 12 have laptops. So it's a lot of kids, a lot of students that have a device. So we um, support the Launch Ed program. Now I'm sure you guys have seen Launch Ed in various things from Launch Ed at Home to now the Launch Ed, which was our first initiative to begin kind of rolling out the one-to-one -one scenario for schools and getting them the resources, digital resources, and students the digital resources and devices to them as well. So we are trying to look for high quality instruction, the digital content to reinforce that, and the instructional technology to help with that and resources to kind of gain more for the students on it. We have a video. I hope it will work. I don't hear it. Yeah, I'm not hearing it, Courtney. Courtney, did you check that box where it says allow your video? I didn't have that box. Let me try again. And I wonder if it's because I'm on a Mac. One moment. There we go. I apologize. I am a uh, not Zoom proficient. Yeah, we're we're uh, 
beginners in Zoom. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think that worked. I had to give Zoom permission. <laughs> Welcome to Orange County Public Schools, proud home of the Launch Ed Digital Learning Program, where we are committed to developing college and career ready students. Our district is the first in Central Florida to provide a digital device to every incoming student at our high schools. Sometimes in school you don't have the amount of time you need to finish a document. And now you can take it home, work on it, finish it as you need to. Our teachers have digital common boards so we can see what we're doing today, tomorrow, what we did last week. It's made my calculus class a lot easier to understand. It's allowed me to use tools so I can actually like see graphs of functions and integrals. It's definitely made schoolwork more interactive and I find it much more entertaining and things that are entertaining help me remember better. Many of our students do not have laptops at home. And so now we have put the tools in the hands of all of our students, leveling that playing field. My students are on social media, they're on the internet, and that allows me to open up the learning outside of the four walls of my classroom. And it's nothing short of revolutionized the way that I teach. There are now so many different modes in which they can express their mastery of the content. I participate more because I get more done and everything is already stored in the computer and I could always go back and it's saved automatically. Media specialists are the cornerstone of the LaunchDead program. They lead the digital curriculum teacher leader team, which provides professional development, mentoring and coaching to peer teachers. Our district is committed to preparing all of our staff for the next generation of instruction and assessment. Our program provides four years of job embedded professional development focused on integrating technology into standards based instruction. The LaunchDead program is a teaching and learning driven initiative. However, there are many operational components that go into making it successful. For example, risk and asset management, safety and security, and our ICTS support services. Students are responsible for checking in and out their devices at the beginning and end of each year to ensure that everything is ready to go for the following school year. We're really excited that the LaunchDead program extends beyond traditional subject areas and into our elective courses. We feel like this creates a richer experience for teachers and students. For example, in our ceramics class, our students are able to research and mold designs together and then take their designs and make it come alive. Our career and technical education programs exist in all of our high schools. They too use outstanding digital technology such as digital imaging, robotics, and even aviation programs to extend learning beyond the school day. It just allows our students just to be able to be held accountable and have that self-discipline so they're being independent with their own learning. So it has changed our classrooms, it has changed the way our teachers have designed their lessons. It has changed the lives of some of our students that did not have access to the technology before. Continuous access to learning increases student engagement. It helps us close the achievement gap and ensures that we are the top producer of successful students in the nation. We invite you to learn more about the Launch Ed Digital Learning Program by visiting digital.ocps.net or scheduling a tour at a Launch Ed site. All right, so in the chat, if you could just take a few moments, what are some things that you noticed in this video with one-on-one -on -one instruction? Nicole, if you can man that chat, please. Awesome. So one of the things that I, or the first thing that we see is the leveled playing field in terms of technology resources. Students are more interested and passionate about schoolwork. Educated, educators like the program because it extends the abilities beyond the classroom. Those are all really good. So especially the leveling the playing field in terms of technology resources. Now, 
especially this year that all students have devices, so K through 12, these, every single student will have a device, whether it is K1 students who have iPads or 2 through 12 who have the Lenovo ThinkPads, which you'll see here shortly. It really does level that playing field because even for me when I was um, going to school, I don't even remember the first time that I really even got to kind of handle a laptop throughout my years. And it really makes it easier for these students to learn all those techno the different technologies and to also kind of be more proficient in that for their future in college or career readiness. Thank you. So we're going to start diving in and looking at teaching and learning in the one-to-one -one classroom. Have another quick video. Oh, sorry. Did you hear it? Yeah. Oh, okay. My sound's being a little funny with these headphones. Now you don't hear it? All right, I'm gonna stop sharing and go through the share process again. Courtney, we heard it for a minute and then it went away. According yeah, to the Clayton back. Back. Christensen Institute for... Huh. We're Learning Clicks presents What's Up with Blended Learning? Blended Learning is an instructional method that integrates the traditional classroom with innovative technology. But it's more than just technology-rich instruction. According to the Clayton Christensen Institute for Disruptive Innovation, Blended learning is defined as a formal education program with three key attributes. One, students learn at least in part through online learning, with some element of control over the time, place, path, and or pace of their education. Two, students are, at least in part, supervised in a brick and mortar location away from home. And three, the modalities along each student's learning path within a course or subject are connected to provide an integrated learning experience. In other words, Blended learning is an instructional method that enables teachers to provide students with a more personalized learning experience. It leverages technology and the internet as a way to enhance learning and promote understanding, while also putting students in the driver's seat when it comes to their education. All right, so as you watch that video, what words stuck out to you? I see individualized, a more personalized experience, personalized modalities, integrated. Absolutely. And with the digital technology now in place, we are able to personalize and we are able to accommodate for these various modalities that students are going through, especially now, especially with what's going on currently we were able to make that pivot for students to have that opportunity to have the launch at, at home or have the face-to-face -face and still have the technology in front of them as well. So it did give us that uh, fluidity, right? To be able to uh, accomplish more in this environment than we could have if we weren't able to do such, such a thing. Thank you. So when blended learning, learning is successfully implemented, there are six hallmarks, personalization, agency, authentic audience, connectivity, and creativity. We're gonna take a few minutes and dive into these a little bit deeper. So the first one is personalization, and that's all about providing that unique learning for each of our students individually. 
So each student has their own pathway. Not everyone learns the same, right? We all learn differently. So having that ability to have a personalized lesson for each of our students, we're able to kind of make everything more cohesive and better and have that differentiation for each of them based on their needs. So with personalization comes agency, giving students that choice, having letting them make those key decisions in their learning experience. That could be modality, it could be time, it could be the activity, just giving them that chance to make those decision, decisions, invest them in their learning. We then also have the authentic audience, and that's all about giving learners the opportunity to create for a real audience, both locally and globally. Without this technology, students in different countries wouldn't be able to collaborate and work together to solve various problems or even just collaborating in general. I'm not quite sure how many of you maybe back in the day had pen pals, but I know I sure did. And it took months to be able to even receive a letter back from a pen pal or anything. Whereas now, if you have pen pals or anything similar to that, you would receive it instantly via email or even messages in Zoom or Teams or anything like that. It's all instant and you can have that authentic audience instantly in real time. So connectivity is another important part of blended learning and that compounds more on giving students the time to collaborate with peers and experts, bringing in those people that can give them other points of view and help shape them as learners. But it's also making sure that connectivity is equal across the board. So having opportunities like hotspots and, and things like that, that they, that way they can continue their learning. And then we have creativity. So this is all about providing learners that opportunity to be, have those collaborative opportunities and make things that matter while building skills for their future. Um, all of these amazing things. I mean, one of the, the biggest um, things that kind of rings for me is recently uh, we were participating in Canvas Con and I remember listening to that keynote speaker, LeVar Burton, and um, we all know him from Reading Rainbow and Star Trek and all of those things, but he was talking about how with technology now, everyone can be so creative. They see these different ideas and things that maybe they noticed in movies or TV shows that they didn't think could be possible and they made it possible. So having that creativity and being able to make those certain things really helps create that blended learning process as well. So we are going to move into an activity next. We're going to have four breakout rooms that you're going to be randomly assigned to. Breakout room one is going to be looking at station rotation. Breakout room two will be looking at lab rotation. Three, flipped classroom, and four, the individual rotation. So remember that because depending on what number you get is what number you're going to be researching. So like I said, you're going to be randomly assigned to a breakout room. Do some research, read about your model and some of the different aspects of blended learning and what it looks like in the classroom. Maybe look at what it looks like on different grade levels. As a group, create a visual description and summary of your model. What you choose to use is all up to you, but be prepared to present. Nicole is adding the breakout titles to the uh, room. So whenever our host is ready, you're going to be randomly assigned to a breakout room. You will have 10 minutes, not a lot of time, but you have 10 minutes to work together. And do a quick little debrief where you guys kind of can um, share about the uh, model that you were given and um, the rotational model that you were given and kind of just share it out with uh, everyone here. So we can go ahead and start with group one. Oh, that's my oh. group. Yeah. Okay, I can share it. Share the screen. Oh, 
Okay. So we got station rotation. And what it is, is, um, wow, the, the grammar. Station rotation allows students to rotate through stations on a fixed schedule. And they contain at least one online learning component. And this type of method is teacher led and it's a collaborative activity. And these stations can include small group instruction, group projects or individual tutoring. So, and I've seen it done in person. So it's a pretty good idea. Awesome. And um, I know that you said that you've seen it done in person. Do you think that it's a successful type of rotational model when you have seen it done in person? Yeah, because the kids like to do it and it's pretty exciting when it's time to like switch tables and they all get to experience something new and they all get to experience every activity. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, group one. That was perfect, straightforward. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Group two, lab rotation. Um, you want me to go or do you want to go? <laughs> Okay, I'll go. <laughs> um, so we discovered that lab rotation is kind of bases off of the student's ability to self-pace uh, themselves. And it, it can either, it kind of bases around the student's success when it comes to a working on a computer using their own work. And then they have the opportunity to rotate, to be with a teacher at another time to answer those more tricky questions or get the extra support. But if they don't need that and they're fine in being successful with just the um, computer mode of education, they can keep going with that until they need that other support. Awesome. And so uh, with lab rotation and station rotation, what do you think is the biggest difference between those two types of models? Are you asking me? <laughs> Yeah, or anyone. I mean, it doesn't have to be you. <laughs> I would say you're using um, technology for the station or for the lab rotation, unlike the station rotation. Um, yeah, I mean, you could use technology for station rotation also. But one of the things that you could definitely tell the difference between a lab rotation and a station rotation is with a station rotation, the students are going through each of the stations. And the lab rotation, if they don't need a particular portion of it, they can skip that. And correct me if I'm wrong, Courtney, but that would be your biggest uh, difference with the lab rotation and the station rotation. And that's a lot of it. Um, another example is that, so say a student has a mathematics course, instead of just doing the math things, he's actually going back and forth between math and science teacher information in order to amplify the math learning to meet his needs. So they're pulling in other things as well that might interest the student to help solidify those additional needs. Awesome. So let's go ahead and continue with group three, flipped classroom. Hi there. Um, so I'm, I'm lucky enough to actually have been in a flipped classroom before. I was a TA for college algebra at Valencia a couple semesters ago. Um, and so I'll share my screen. There's a really great visual we found when we did a quick um, Google images search. Um, so in a traditional setting, you have lecture in, during your class time where, where the teacher gives the information um, in the group, and then the students go home and do activities. In a flipped classroom, those two space roles are switched, where at home, the student obtains new information and can either watch videos or do whatever they need to do to obtain the information. And then when they go into the classroom, um, they work together in collaborative activities and do their homework together, basically. Um, another good image we liked was this one here. Let me see if I can make it bigger. Um, where before, before they go into class at home is where they're given like definitions and they're given that kind of rote information um, where they can prepare to then when they go into class, work together in groups, um, do more application-based projects um, and then ask the harder questions while they're all together 
and utilize that space in that kind of way um, and that kind of thing. <laughs> That's perfect. That was a great. I do loved those visuals. Those visuals were really nice. And I mean, it explained it perfectly. So thank you so much, Kathleen. And we'll go ahead and go to our last group, which was the individual rotation. Anyone from the individual rotation? So for individual rotation, um, I don't know how to share my, oh, there I can share it, hold on. Actually, I don't know. I can't share my screen, but um, I'll just explain it. So we found out that it was like the other styles of rotation, but students are allowed to rotate um, at different times. So after like a social area, they don't have to go um, right to an intervention group. They can go to the science lab um, and their rotation is like personalized to themselves and their skill level and what knowledge they still need to learn. Um, so it's tailored to each student. Perfect, bringing in that personalization that we spoke of previously and making sure that everything is tailored to the students to meet their needs. That's great. So let's go ahead and continue. Um, Courtney, if you wanted mm -hmm. to bring up the. Okay, thank you so much everyone for doing that. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about different um, instructional models within blended learning and how they can be implemented. And you're kind of thinking some ideas of how it can be implemented with your students in, in class. So we're gonna look at different ways to make blended learning possible, especially in Orange County. Um, we have what's called launch ed hardware. So I mentioned before that our students and teachers all have devices. And again, our K-1 students have iPads. In our classroom though, we have even more. Our teachers have smart boards, they have ladybug or smart uh, dot cameras. When it was pre-COVID, we had the cue ball, which is a great thing. You put the speaker in it, you can toss it around so students can speak and share and everyone around the room can hear them. And then we also have all our audio enhancement. Our teachers have that and it's um, right now in the, launch ed situation that we are now where we have some students who are learning from home and in school our um, audio enhancement actually hooks up so that students at home and in school can hear from that one device and there's no interference there's no um, like students can't hear in the classroom or it's too loud in the classroom but too soft online it all comes through there and the teacher's not losing their voice so with the launch ed apps and software these are our main uh, resources that we kind of look at. We have our learning management system, which is similar to the ones that you guys use um, Canvas. And that's where our teachers and our students go to receive any of their information or anything like that. They uh, upload assignments onto there and they really work within there. Um, and it's interesting uh, to see the back end of it because you guys were actually able to use Canvas as a student. So now when you go into teaching, if you do teach in OCPS or in any uh, district that does use Canvas, you're able to kind of see the back end and see all of the things that kind of make things flow better for your classes and make it easier for your students. We then also have our single sign-on platform. And this again is to make things easier for students when they are going to uh, find different applications or anything like that. Um, before, you know, we had this single sign on platform, it would take time for you to kind of direct students to where they're supposed to go. What is their login? Do they remember their password? Anything like that? Is it a secure site? You know, with single sign on it, you know, that is secure site. It's been uh, vetted by us at OCPS, IT, any of our teams. And the students don't have to remember 5 million passwords or even the one the um, various passwords, they just remember the one with their student ID number and then everything logs in from there. So it makes it all easier. From there, you can access all of the digital textbooks, tools and library resources. So any of these digital resources that you hear about like Nearpod and stuff like that, those you can find on our single sign-on platform as well. And it all just makes it easier for students to locate any of these digital resources and be able to have that access for them and for the teachers. And it 
gives teachers more, uh, more of that valuable time in the classroom to be able to teach instead of having to wait for students to log into all those different platforms. Don't think we have time for the next activity. So I'm just gonna skip this slide. It's fun activity too. Um, so are there, we have about eight, six minutes left. And I do wanna leave some time um, for Natalie to come in and also talk as well. But what one-to-one -one really is, is it's student-centered. Everything after that is based on our students. It is teacher-led, it's content-driven, it's blended but our students are the ones that drive our decision on choosing devices, on choosing content, on choosing digital tools that we use. Everything is done with them in mind. So turn it over to you all, any questions that you have? Unmute, put them in the chat, either or. Well, Courtney, why don't you ask them a question because I'm sure they'll have an answer for you if you want to um, pose a question to them. All right. So uh, what Natalie's ending at is we actually have a Amazon gift card. I That's bet you they answer. Yes, it's going to be a $20 Amazon gift card that we're going to mail out to the person, the first person that correctly answers your question. So, so first person, do tell us. How many OCPS schools are one-to-one? -one? And you can, well, actually, so you have to find my name, Natalie Cumby, and you will privately message me. They can uh, message the group for the, because mm -hmm. I see them already typing on well, there, Natalie. In the that's group fine. I don't see the right answer yet, though, so nope, we're still, still waiting. So that, that works. Still waiting for the first person to correctly answer that. Oh man. Wow, I guess I'm gonna have to use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's actually, this is funny. <laughs> Allison. Allison, you can't play. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. <laughs> Oh, so many are, are, there's a few that are so close. close, so close. Maybe we have to ask another question. We'll give them the answer to this one and ask another one because it doesn't look like they're going to get it. We're very, very close. Or do we give it to the so person close. closest? <laughs> I don't know, is it Price is Right rules? <laughs> if yeah. you go over here. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. is. Woo! Melissa <laughs> James. Melissa James. Um, so, Melissa, if you can find my name in the chat, and I'm Natalie Cumby, C U M B I E, what I need you to do, actually, what I'll do, let me do this. Let me send you my email. And Melissa only. <laughs> you will Melissa send me, only. Yes, yes you're going to send me you guys can email me but not about the amazon gift card but um <laughs> you can email me your address your name and address and then i will send it to you i'll mail you it actually you. sent that to me privately oh <laughs> Angelica, why would you say such a thing? <laughs> She's a good student. She's a good student. If that was a test. That was a test. <laughs> How did I even do that? Because I didn't think I pressed anybody. Okay. I thought it automatically went to everyone. Thank you, yeah. Angelica. Yeah. You're sweet. Hopefully you'll win next time. <laughs> So it's just a few minutes to go. Um, I just wanted to put this up here.
please feel free to reach out to Nicole and myself at any time. Follow us on Twitter. You can we tweet a lot about digital things and library media things that we do. But we hope that you enjoyed, learned a little bit more about blended learning and one to one. And and it's not the device that drives it; it's our students that drive any decision we make. So thank you all for joining us. Absolutely, and stay on because we do have um, Natalie here to talk a little bit to you guys beforehand. So, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have much to add to it. You know, uh, we have these experts on for a reason so they can talk and um, give you information regarding what they have to offer in their departments. But I am working with human resources and I'm actually the assistant director of our talent acquisition and compliance department. And so we like to get to know you guys. We like to connect with you. So again, anybody can use my email address to reach out to me with any questions you have regarding, you know, getting certified and, you know, what are next steps, because we definitely want to make sure that we keep you in Orange County Public Schools as our phenomenal teachers and um, just work with you through the process. And we have so many um, opportunities for you at our district with our benefits package and you know everything um, that comes along with beginning teachers program. So if you guys want to shoot me an email, if you need any additional information, you get off this call and you say, oh, I wish I would have asked this, you know, send it to me and I can either forward it to Courtney. I mean, you guys have Courtney and Nicole's information there as well, but anything else that we can help you with, we'll be more than happy to do so. And we thank you, thank you for giving us the opportunity to meet with you tonight. I just realized it's not even my Twitter anymore. <laughs> I did tweet it out too, by the way. So some of you guys are going to appear in a, a tweet today. Yay! So thank, I just want to say thank, thank you, you guys again to so Courtney much. and Nicole and also Bianca for hosting us tonight too. Yes, yes thank you. And um, I did see before you guys leave that there's going to be an attendance verification link. So mm -hmm. please don't leave until you get that. Um, and I think Bianca's going to send that through the night at talks. Bianca, I don't know if you wanted to address that. Yeah, so um, thank you so much, um, Courtney and Nicole, um, for this incredibly informative presentation. I'm sure we learned, we all learned a lot and um, put these tools to, we'll put these tools to use in our teacher toolbox. So on, on behalf of the School of Teacher Education and the Student National Education Association, I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Mm -hmm.